here we have it, BMW decides to introduce an all new series to its collection. The F32 model, which is more commonly recognized as the BMW 4 Series. So the different models that come in the 4 Series are the 428i, the 435i, and of course the BMW M4. Now driving this car, whether it's on Drive, or Sport Plus, or even Eco Pro, throttle response is absolutely fantastic. Turbo lag is completely factored out. Engine noise and the responsiveness of the throttle really makes me wonder if this really is a 4 cylinder. Now I'm sure you want to know what models you can get in the 4 Series, right? Well, nothing really new introduced in the 4 Series BMW. You can still get the 428i, 435i, or of course the M4, which is absolutely my favorite. Now the 428i is an inline 4, it's a 2.0 liter 4 cylinder engine, which sounds so weird. BMW, I'm driving around in a 2.0 2 liter 4 cylinder BMW, you're thinking that you're driving an Audi A4 or something. No. BMW did introduce the 4 cylinder in 2014, however you don't really feel it. That's the great thing. It doesn't lack the power, it doesn't lack the handling, it doesn't lack that feeling of the high performance vehicle or that luxury, fast, quick responding vehicle. It doesn't lack that at all and that's all because of the twin power turbo it clipped in the engine. Then you have the 435i. Now we're all used to the inline 6 and BMWs. So they have that, they still kept it for those of you who really appreciate the inline six, and if you do, that's why you have the 435i. And the 435i has the three liter inline six twin power turbo, just like the four cylinder, it's got the twin power turbo in it, and it does zero to 60 in 5.0 seconds. Now the four cylinder, the 428, which is this model, does zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Not too bad. You don't feel like it could, it could, I'm sure it can overtake many four cylinders out there. So don't be ashamed and do not be disappointed whatsoever. Then of course, best for last, you got the M4. Now the M4 is also equipped with the inline six. Now in the generation before this, we had the M3, which is very similar to the M4. The M4 here has the inline six twin turbos, and we'll talk about that later, and does zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds and has approximately 425 horsepower. And the 435 has approximately 320 horsepower. So a little bit of a jump in horsepower between the three series in 2010 and up and the four series in 2014 and up. Now a little bit between the 3 Series and the 4 Series. Now starting 2014, you can no longer get an M3 Coupe. That's changed and that's why they introduced the BMW M4. Now the M3 comes only in a sedan in 2014 and if you'd like a Coupe, you'd have to get the M4. Now you can get a 3 Series sedan only but you can get a 4 Series sedan or a Coupe. I don't know why they did that. It's kind of confusing. I guess it's just like adding numbers to its collection, 3 series, 4 series, 5 series, 10 series next, we don't know. But so the only way to really find out what it feels like to drive a 4 cylinder BMW is to actually test drive it. So now it is important to realize that in the 428 and the 435 the engine design and architecture is completely different than the M4. The BMW M4 actually has twin turbo in it so it has two individual turbos later on in the video we're going to talk about what the 428 and the 435 mean by twin power turbo so what does bmw really mean by twin power turbos do you believe that it is two turbos in the engine it certainly doesn't feel like two turbos so let's find out what really they mean by twin power turbo Now, as I promised you, I told you I was going to explain to you a little bit about what the twin power turbo means in these engines starting 2014. 
Now, Twin Power Turbo has led on many people to think that their engine is equipped with two individual turbos connected to the exhaust manifold of the engine. However, in the 428 and the 435, that's not the case. Now, you have a single turbo built into the engine that has twin scrolls. Now, the technology of the twin scrolls is supposed to improve efficiency and uh, dynamics and a better response and a better torque at lower speeds. It's uh, very beneficial. However, it does not mean tw two turbos. So, how it works is that from the exhaust manifold, the inlet to the uh, turbine is actually, instead of one inlet, it's actually split into two. So you have two inlets, but one um, turbo, and the inlet is connected to the exhaust manifold that releases the exhaust gases, and um, each inlet is connected to the different cylinders, and it's like a, a certain order that the cylinders are connected, and um, that way the torque will be delivered and you'll have um, no turbo lag. It'll be um, split up into the exhaust man. Basically the exhaust gases are going to be split up and um, depending on your speed and depending on the cylinder that's fired or the sequence is that's where the um, exhaust will be flowing through and allow the tur turbo to turn and it's a lot more complicated than that but just like long story short and so that way you'll have the turbocharger working at high and low speeds and that way it um, reduces turbo lag and seriously from driving this vehicle it feels you really do not feel turbo lag I've driven a 335 in the um, E92 and you do feel that turbo lag the turbo kicks in after a while but really in this you really feel no turbo lag especially in sport mode especially in sport plus so for those of you who are so accustomed to the BMW ride and handling, the stiff suspension, the nice steering wheel, that firm grip on the ground, well, the F32 changes a little bit. New technology has been improved and introduced, but is it really improved? I mean, driving it, I personally have other opinions. We'll hear what other people have to say. But let's talk about the new technology introduced into the new F32. Now, I think it's safe to say that it's almost a fact that driving a BMW is basically on full control of the vehicle. The best way I could describe it is to say that it feels like you're driving with no power steering, so it's strictly mechanical. But of course, BMW has to keep up with modern technology. And a few years ago, they introduced a new technology called variable sport steering. So variable sport steering focuses on steering ratio adjustments based on your drivability, your terrain, and just overall driving conditions. And of course the ride and handling technology is topped off with the adaptive suspension dampening technology, which is supposed to give you a comfortable ride throughout any kind of terrain, any kind of weather conditions, and therefore less for vibration within the cabin of the vehicle. Now between the E92 model, which is the previous generation, and the F32, which is this new generation, there's a major difference in the ride and handling, which is not necessarily a good thing. And roads with bumps and rocks and different kind of driving conditions really feels like you're not driving the car, but the steering is just controlling itself. I've noticed when driving this and hitting very minor bumps, I feel the steering wheel kind of tilt to the left or tilt to the right, kind of making it unstable. And with that, I really feel a lot less confident driving this vehicle than I did when I drove a U92 model in the previous generation. The 4 Series maintains its luxury and high-tech interior. The elegant three-tone interior with the tan, silver, and black just makes it stand out as that modern look finish to it. And let's not forget that wonderful M Sport package added on, definitely making that steering wheel more high-tech and better for high-performance driving. The speedometer maintains its look from the previous generation, and of course we can't forget about that small screen in the center console that allows you to navigate through the radio, and of course the high-tech iDrive gives you up-to-date information about your service 